Are you a lifelong fan of General Hospital? Are you a new fan who wants to know more about the history of the show? Do you enjoy talking about the show with others? Do you find yourself yelling at the TV? Is your self-care an hour a day in Port Charles? If so, we invite you to join hosts Amanda Kimmel and Shannon Coach at the place where all the hidden conversations take place and secrets are revealed. Meet us at Pier 54, a General Hospital fan podcast. Hello. Hi. Welcome to the Port Charles 411. Today we are talking about the doctor who has been on twice in the past year, right? Yeah. For a day. For a day. Andre Maddox. They really need to find a reason to have him on all the time. I agree. I really, I love the character. And he was getting really interesting. Mm -hmm. Not that he wasn't always, but he was finally, it was almost like he was getting his own footing. (gasps) He could help us unpack the tarot cards and Demeter. Yes. Okay. That would be really cool because he did a lot with, and we'll get into it with his storylines, but he has done a lot with like the memory Mm -hmm. stuff. So that would make sense. Okay. See, I just wrote everything we need him to say around for. You're welcome. Yeah. I like it. Besides the fact he's a cutie. There, There is that. Yes. So we are using general hospital fandom as always. And Dr. Andre Maddox, MD, was portrayed by Anthony Montgomery, and he debuted in 2015. Wow. Yeah. So he was originally contacted by Dr. Kevin Collins to take over Anna Devane's case. And I believe that this is when she was having the memory vision issues, right? Yes. However, Anna is hesitant because Andre is a stranger and they clash during their first session. Anna ends up inviting him to Thanksgiving at Patrick's house where he meets Patrick, Sam, Emma, and Danny. I tried so hard to find this Thanksgiving because you would think that that would have been one that would have definitely been there. Nope, couldn't find it. And shortly after, he and Anna arrive and he is shocked to learn that Emma is Anna's granddaughter. Days later, he is revealed to be Morgan's doctor if he is bipolar or not. He wants Morgan to take a mood stabilizer And tells him that he needs to monitor, that he needs to be monitored, and that bipolar disorder does not go away, but it is treatable. Later, Carly and Michael ask Dr. Maddox about Morgan, but he cannot tell them since Morgan's an adult. Yay! Yay, Good job. (laughs) That's why he's not on the show. He (laughs) knows HIPAA. And And Morgan had not signed off to do so, but he does tell them to keep an open communication with Morgan. He shows up on the pier while Anna is there. And he asks Anna when she will be in therapy again since she has not been to another session. He tells Anna that she has to deal with her guilt. Anna tells him that she doesn't need his services anymore, to which he replies, if she doesn't come to therapy, he will be forced to go to the police and tell them about Carlos. That's right. That was after she shot Carlos. Yeah. Anna gets angry about this. And Andre explains that the shooting is still tearing Anna up inside. Anna then replies, the man I thought I killed may not be dead. Maddox asked Anna if there is someone in the PCPD she doesn't trust. Anna tells him that she doesn't trust DA Paul Hornsby. Thank you. Since he had the body, he had the body the police found cremated and the report showed that the body was only shot twice and she shot Carlos four times. Mm -hmm. Later, he tells Anna If Paul is as dangerous as you say, then you need to be careful. Well, thanks, Andre. That was a little obvious. On January 6th, he meets Jordan at Kelly's for a date. But before he sees Jordan, Anna stops and tells him that she is doing better and tries to introduce Jordan to him when she realizes that he is at at Kelly's for a date with Jordan. Also, was she trying to like hook them up or was she just introducing? I think she was just introducing. Yeah. Then Anna tells Andre and Jordan to have fun as she leaves to go to Robin and Patrick's house. Andre and Jordan talk and he talks about their date they had on New Year's. Later, him and Jordan are discussing and planning a third date and they kiss outside of Kelly's. Mm. On January 12th, he gives a therapy session to Morgan for his bipolar disorder. We get no other information. Okay. No, and that's in Morgan's bipolar does not have its own playlist, which I was. That is awful. There should absolutely be. Yes. But I guess that's good because it doesn't take us off onto Morgan. No, but I'm sure that there were a lot of really good conversations that were had during that. 
Then Andre shows up at the police station and gives Jordan a cup of coffee. Later on, he witnesses Jordan and Nathan interrogate Johnny Zakara. After Jordan is done interrogating Johnny, her and Andre flirt with each other before he leaves to see a patient. The patient turns out to be Anna. It is also revealed that he and Robert Scorpio know each other. He and Anna talk about Carlos and his relationship to Sabrina as a way to figure out where the two of them are. On February 8th, he and Anna run into each other at the floating rib. They discuss Anna's quest to find Carlos and how she is feeling alone now that Robin and Emma have left town. Hmm, that makes me sad. Yeah. Later on, he cryptically says that we all have trouble being alone sometimes. He meets Jordan for a date at the floating rib. Later, Jordan tells him that Curtis is her former brother-in-law and they are not on good terms. Andre introduces himself to Curtis. Later on, when he continues his date with Jordan, he asks her if she will have a problem if Curtis does not leave town. Apparently, she got over that problem. Just a bit. <laughs> he shows up at the PCPD and tells Jordan that she cannot put Morgan in a holding cell. Later on, he talks with Sonny and Carly about Morgan. Had they signed that paper? Hmm. I'm sure at I this hope point so. they had... He gets angry with a nurse when he finds out Morgan is missing from oh, the hospital room. I think this is when he was hospitalized, so maybe that was different. Maybe. Afterward, he finds Morgan on the roof where he tries to stop him from committing suicide. He is able to help stop him along with Sonny and Michael. The next day, Andre goes to the hospital chapel and runs into Anna. They talk about what happened on Pier 54 whoop, whoop, during Alexis and Julian's wedding and if Anna thinks Paul is still going to hold something over Anna's head. Anna tells him that she's not sure, but she knows that she has to get justice for Duke. Anna also says that she will probably go to jail. Andre says there's a lot of people that would miss her. Oh, oh. yeah. Yeah. And then October 2017, Andre was revealed to be working with the people that kept a man with Jason Morgan's original face, locked away in an institution who soon escaped. On December 1st, after getting arrested, he was forced to tell all. The man who everyone thought was Jason was really his long-lost twin, Andrew Kane, and the man who escaped from the clinic was really Jason. It is later revealed that Andre developed a method of recording and transferring memories and used it to wipe Drew Kane's memories and replace them with his twin brother's Jason Morgan. Andre was visited by Anna in mid-February 2018. Andre was arrested and incarcerated. He was released by the WSB in order to help in memory mapping. In May 2018, he promised Drew he would be willing to help him regain his memories if he finds the memory drive containing them. On March 14th, 2019, Andre visited Anna at the Metro Court, and he learned that Anna was part of Dr. Arthur Cabot's original study of memory transfer between identical twins. He gives her and Finn everything he has on Cabot's study. On August 21st, Drew went to search for Andre in Ethiopia so he could get Andre to reverse Franco's memory transfer, which was done to him by Cabot under Shiloh's orders, and caused Franco to believe that he was Drew prior to 2012. Goodness, it was that so storyline ended. So confusing. However, on September 3rd, Andre was found unconscious and hospitalized at GH, and Drew is nowhere to be seen. On September 4th, Epiphany revealed that Andre had been stabbed twice in the abdomen and nearly bled to death. Peter then walked into Andre's hospital room and started to tamper with his hospital equipment, giving him minor complications before sneaking out. Epiphany fixed Andre, and he woke up. Andre told the story about his stabbing to Jordan, Jason, and Mac, telling them that upon the, his return to Port Charles, someone wanted to drive him out of GH, but the driver, whom Andre thought was sent by Drew, stabbed him twice and ran off. Andre then said that he had to drive himself to GH while bleeding out before, oh my gosh. noting that Drew never made it to Afghanistan. I mean, adrenaline. Yeah. I think. It's just that sentence, bleeding out. Yeah, yeah, no. On October 14th, Andre was revealed to have recovered from his stab wounds and met with Peter August at Charlie's Pub, where they discussed if Andre heard from Anna, and they also discussed what would happen when Andre performs the memory mapping procedure on Franco to restore his memories. In six weeks? Uh, I'm telling you, it was I all mean, so confusing. And then she recovered from stab wounds. Yeah. I had a different, I mean, I had surgery, and I did not recover from those wounds in six weeks. Apparently, okay. Andre's magical healing powers. Oh, 
<laughs> Eventually, after Peter left, Jason met, met with Andre and asked if he recognized a guy named Brace Henderson, and Andre thought he looked vaguely familiar. So Jason showed him another picture of Brace with a beard, and Andre recognized him as the man who stabbed him. Why do I feel like that's like a Clark Kent thing? <laughs> right? Like, what about if you take his glasses beard? off? No beard. Beard, no beard. <laughs> On November 28th, Franco met with Andre at GH who examined him and Franco said it looked like mad science. Andre promised Franco that he will not go through with the procedure without his consent and that he could change his mind at any time. Hold it. <laughs> That's kind of funny though. Yeah. He could change his mind at any time. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you were so messed up. <laughs> oh my god. What is there to have to <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> anyway, Franco and Andre agreed that the procedure will be done tomorrow. Andre later went to Anna's house and revealed that Franco decided to have the procedure reversed after all, much to Peter's dismay. On December 9th, Andre prepped Franco for the memory reversal procedure and presented a DNR because Franco did not want to be on life support if anything happened. After Andre administered the sedative, he began the procedure to remove Drew's memories, but a man, David Black, dressed in scrubs, came in with a gun. David was going to shoot Andre, but before he could, Andre fought him in self-defense, but was knocked out. David was going to eliminate Franco as well, but Peter ended up coming into the room and he shot David. This is where we were so confused if Peter was good or right. bad, because he set it up for this guy to kill them, and then he was like, no, 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 wait, I changed my mind. Maybe he's Nina's son instead because they flip oh, all back dear. and forth. Anna found Andre and woke him up as Elizabeth was watching over Franco. Peter claimed that something didn't sit right with David, the man who was trying to kill Andre, so he shot him in their defense. Eventually, the procedure was complete and Franco was moved to recovery. On December 16th, Andre updated Elizabeth and Cameron on Franco's condition and said that he had every reason to believe that he will wake up, but warned them that Franco had signed a DNR as to not be stuck on life support if anything went wrong. Andre later learned that David, the man who tried to kill him and Franco, did not make it. Eventually, Andre told Elizabeth and Cameron that Franco is closer to regaining consciousness. After Andre left the room, Franco woke up and it was revealed that the procedure had worked and that he was back to normal. Andre later came back and checked on Franco's vitals and told Franco to allow the memories to come back on their own. Andre later updated Finn, Anna, and Peter that Franco's awake and that he is back to being Franco and not Drew anymore. <laughs> on January 8th, 2021, nurse Chantel is looking at a chart when Peter August comes up to her at the front desk and asks her to find Dr. Andre Maddox. And then on March 4th, 2022, Anna mentions going to look for Andre as Victor Cassadine is interested in Drew's memories. Dun, dun, dun. And then they're missing in the fall of 2022 when she was on the run with Valentine. He met them in Holland, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And then we just saw him recently in May of 2023 again about he was there to help Anna. Right. We didn't really get into any more. No. Any more info, which is why he needs to well, stay around. They were trying to get him to tell them where the Cassadine compounds are. And he's like, I don't know. They keep blindfolding me and taking me like, to different I places. And yeah. I don't know where I'm going. So I don't know. So the crimes he has committed oh, was geez. conditioning Drew Kane into having his twin brother, Jason Morgan's memories, and then believing it was him under the order of Cesar Faison. And then he helped Jace hold Jason captive in a clinic. He conspired to cover up the identities of the two Jason Morgans, <laughs> failed to advise Jordan that Curtis had called about a homicide. Andre didn't know the reason. Yeah. Why would Curtis leave that as a message? Uh, I don't, hey, I, I really I just need your help figuring out this homicide. Call me back. What? Oh, man. I wish that I remembered what that was. Then he faked Drew's death. And then he was indirectly responsible for the hostage crisis at the Metro Court in 2017. He gave Franco Baldwin a fake death certificate of Drew. He started a fight with Curtis, and then he assaulted David Black, a man sent to kill him by Peter August in self-defense. Okay, I don't feel like that was a crime. It was self-defense. It's right. in that sentence. Right, and he fought with him. Right. Like, yeah, no. 
Mm -mm. And he was slapped by Jordan Ashford, briefly suspected of killing a patient, but later cleared. He assaulted, was assaulted by Drew Kane. He was stabbed twice in the abdomen by Bryce Henderson under the orders of Peter August and nearly bled to death. He experienced minor complications after Peter snuck into his hospital room and tampered with the hospital's equipment, but woke up shortly after. Thank and you, Epiphany. He was nearly killed and then knocked out by David Black. Two months later, again, nearly killed and then knocked out by David Black, a man that was sent to kill him by Peter after a fight. Okie dokie. I just know that we need him back to explain all of these things. There's like so much information. I remember being so confused during this time, even though we were following it along, that he needs to just come and explain it all. Like sit down with Anna and be like, here we are from start to finish. Right. And he was born June 3rd, 1980. He has an alias of Arthur Matthews. He is a psychiatrist. He was former psychiatrist at General Hospital, and he's a former WSB asset. It says that his residence is the Metro Court Hotel. I don't feel like that's his residence. I feel like when he comes into town, that's right, he where doesn't he have goes. a house. He was married to Keita Maddox, who is divorced. I don't remember even... Uh-uh. Ever like, hearing about her. Not even hearing about her. Mm-mm. He and Jordan were lovers from 2016 to 17, and he and Anna had little crushy crushes, and they kissed in 2017, and he crushed on her in 18, too, and they danced. They didn't do the tango. (laughs) Thank God. I don't think they did the tango. I can't remember. I really hope not. But so that is it about Andre Maddox. I mean, it's not a lot, but he really is. Because he was involved everywhere. He really does need to just sit and explain it to us. I feel really bad for these characters that we know and love them and we can't really do that big of a 411 about them because I noticed like they don't really have anything in there about his relationship with Jordan. And then you can click and it says Jordan and Andre. They don't even have a write up on their relationship. It's just they had a romance. Right. Okay. No, like they were really together. They were. They were super cute. I liked them. I liked them too. Maybe they'll get back together. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. We do need him to come back, though, and explain this whole... I feel like it's time now. If they're ending the Victor storyline, then we need to take it all the way back to the beginning and him be like, this happened because of this, and this is why we were brain mapping, and this is why we we're swapping people out, and blah, 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 blah. Did he know from the beginning who he was working for? Or was he just developing... He knew he was working for Arthur Cabot and doing this memory stuff, but did he know why? I don't think so. I don't think so either, but then he found out and didn't stop, and so that's where the crime was. Right. I'm surprised that there's laws on the books about that one, to be (laughs) honest. What was his intention? (laughs) I don't know, but I like seeing him. Mm -hmm. But for more than five minutes would be really nice. Yeah. Yeah, I hope they give him a whole bunch of storyline. So we have to like go back and do a Andre 2.0 and give you so much information. Because this was really just affirming what we said. He was involved a little bit in everything, but they didn't really focus on him. No. He didn't really have a storyline other than Jordan. No. And his flirtation and his with, with Anna. Anna. Yeah. Yep. All right, guys. We need Andre back. Thanks. <laughs> on that note... <laughs> Join us on Monday. Pretty sure we're not going to see him or hear from him, but who knows? No, I'm having faith we will. Perhaps. Either way, have a good weekend. And we'll meet you at the pier. Bye. Bye. If you enjoyed today's show, we invite you to go to pier54podcast.com to subscribe on your favorite platform. Don't forget to leave us a review. And you can also follow us on many social media channels. Just search for Pier 54 Podcast. Also, we are not perfect, so if there is something that we missed or messed up, just let us know by emailing us at peer54podcast at gmail.com. 